Hello and welcome to all. Since the beginning of the war in Ukraine, the speculations and the wildest rumors are going on about the health of the Russian president. According to some, Vladimir Putin would indeed be at the end of his rope and would already have one foot in the grave. When others repeat to whoever will listen that the new Tsar of Russia would be suffering from an incurable cancer and that he has only a few months to live at most. But the least we can say is that these alarmist assertions do not really stick to the portrait of the Superman of the Kremlin that we are used to seeing these last years. The image of the Russian president is indeed that of a strong man, fond of hunting and outdoor activities, and a seasoned practitioner of martial arts and bodybuilding. Of course, no human being is immortal, and it is not totally excluded that Putin will eventually die, as we all will one day. However, we have decided to push the issue a little bit further, and without playing the dirty game of propaganda, to try to reveal to you what is behind the cards from a purely objective point of view. So make yourself comfortable, because today we are going to reveal everything about the alleged agony of Vladimir Putin. Let's go! Since the beginning of the Russian military operations in Ukraine, the name Vladimir Putin is on everyone's lips, and everyone has their own, more or less relevant theory about what could secretly motivate the master of the Kremlin. An enigmatic character in the extreme, Vladimir Putin may be the most powerful and richest man on the planet, but the fact remains that few people have the privilege of knowing him well. The almost legendary discretion of this former KGB spy prevents anyone from having information on his private life, as well as on his moods or his personal motivations disclosing only the information that suits him, even if it is only a little bit. Putin can boast of being one of the most taciturn leaders in the history of humanity. However, this does not prevent the CIA and other spy agencies of Western countries from making a rather pretentious speech about their alleged ability to know Vladimir Putin inside out. These same agencies even go so far as to assert their total knowledge of Putin's military plan as well as of all the strategies adopted at the highest levels of the Russian general staff. According to them, the Russian high command is almost on the verge of collapse, and the Russian president will have to face a coup d'etat led by high-ranking military officials very soon. The reason given for this putsch would be that the war in Ukraine, as well as the economic sanctions that followed it, would have bled the wallets of Russian households. And if we believe the multitudes of reports supposedly emanating from the theater of operations, the successive defeats and the losses in material and men have downright undermined the morale of soldiers and their officers. According to them, Vladimir Putin should therefore very soon face a popular revolt that could seriously destabilize his hold on the country. Worse still, the generals of his army could go into action at the most propitious moment for them and carry out the putsch that will sign the death knell of Putin. Some analysts believe that the Russian president could even be killed during this process and that his life would be under constant threat for several weeks now. If this scenario worthy of an anticipation novel comes true, one thing is certain, the Russian Federation will withdraw immediately from the Ukrainian territories and the war will end almost immediately. The coup generals will certainly put a politician who is part of their circle of protégés and the first thing this person will do is to order the withdrawal of Russian troops and the immediate cessation of all hostilities. Indeed, the last thing these generals will want is to have their hands stained with blood and have to appear as war criminals before an international criminal court. And that is exactly what will happen to them if they are ever caught in any way. But by giving the order to stop the military operations, and by dismissing Putin and his closest collaborators in the process, the Russian army and its general staff will be seen as heroes who have overthrown a tyrant and put an end to the suffering of the Ukrainian civilian population. The press and the media of the whole world will praise these heroic acts, and the international community will end up lifting the economic sanctions on Russia. Everything will eventually return to normal, and this despot Putin will finally become a mere bad memory which should never be mentioned again except to make fun of him. School books and official history will probably end up calling him the worst war criminal of all time just below Adolf Hitler, and the world will pick up right where it left off before the Russian invasion began. This skillfully crafted scenario remains unlikely, however, and unfortunately risks disappointing some. And to be even cruder, this version of facts is worthy of a science fiction movie, the worst there is. Because, unless it has the powers of ubiquity and omniscience, the CIA will never be able to really predict the future and to boast of having classified information that is only accessible within the highest spheres of Russian power. The United States and its European allies certainly have advanced technological equipment in the field of intelligence, and the myriad of American satellites that dot the skies are a wonderful tool for espionage and reconnaissance. We must not forget the quasi-futuristic aircraft of the U.S. Air Force, which are capable of flying over and spying on large areas of territory by stealth. And there are probably also a multitude of spies and double agents inside the Russian territory itself, and perhaps even within the Kremlin and the remote entourage of the Russian president. This is all well and good, and it may also be true, 
although one cannot really decide exactly on the question. But what is certain, and what the Western world seems to have forgotten, is that the Russian Federation also has the same strategic assets. Because everyone knows that the Russians have their own advanced satellite and radar systems and the efficiency and effectiveness of its intelligence department is no secret. The Russian FSB, which is the worthy successor of the KGB, is also a real breeding ground for spies, which is also an open secret if you can say it like that. And the Russian fifth column is also present in Ukraine, as it is in most Western countries. There was even a program during the Cold War that trained Russian agents in the American way of life, and after their training sent them directly to the United States under a real false cover. These sleeper cells may well have been unmasked by now, but who is to say that Russia does not have a new, similar program and one that is even more effective given technical advances and new information and intelligence technologies? Moreover, observers in Moscow and in the field hardly consider the probability of a coup d'etat fomented by the military, and even less, a revolt by the civilian population. The truth is that in Russia, almost all the people support the president unwaveringly and the army could not be more loyal to its supreme commander. And how could it be otherwise when the Russian television broadcast from morning to night lies about the real reason of the war in Ukraine and even shows false reports that Ukrainians would have called with their wishes for this murderous invasion? Unfortunately, the majority of the Russian people believe that Vladimir Putin was right to invade a sovereign country and there is no question of a military putsch or a civil revolution that would depose Putin and end the war. If, as we have just seen, the probability of a death of the head of the Kremlin following a coup d'etat is almost impossible, let us now turn to the next peril that would threaten Vladimir Putin – cancer. For several months, rumors have been circulating that Vladimir Putin's health is completely failing and that his general condition has greatly deteriorated. Indeed, the media takes turns to inform us about the serious disease that would eat away at the Russian president, saying that it would be a cancer of the intestines, to be corrected the next day, shouting that it would rather be a thyroid cancer. Other sources speak of Parkinson's disease at a very advanced stage of development and try to give credibility to their thesis by putting forward often vague explanations and by dissecting photos and videos of the Russian president. Puffy face, dark circles, or curled up body posture, almost harmless details are transformed under the magnifying glass of these pseudo-analysts into clear signs of agony. The master of the Kremlin has not escaped other illnesses, this time of a mental nature, since he has been described as a sociopathic autistic, or even a congenital Down syndrome and mentally retarded. According to the media, Vladimir Putin would finally be affected by all the evils, which would justify his decision to wage war on his neighboring country because, as he would not have much time left to live, he would like to leave his mark on the world just like the great conquerors of ancient history. By invading Ukraine and resurrecting the lost glory and prestige of the former Soviet power, Vladimir Putin would like to leave a substantial legacy before he kicked the bucket. Once again, and at the risk of disappointing you, this scenario should seem to us totally absurd and incongruous. Because the least we can say is that the master of the Kremlin is really far from being a walking corpse, dragging a cancer in terminal stage and stuffed with drugs and ultra-powerful barbiturates to numb his unbearable and constant pain. The many times Putin has appeared since the start of military operations, he was literally dashing and his face was healthy. Everything about him shows that he is in good shape and that the rumors about him are certainly false. The rumors and false hopes of a way out of the crisis are therefore following one another and the countries involved from near or far are getting more and more desperate. Unfortunately, many countries see themselves bound hand and foot in this affair, hardly able to intervene since they depend enormously on Russian gas or its oil. Vladimir Putin has been careful to warn everyone of the risks involved if he ever tries to interfere in this horrible war. The gas tap could therefore be cut off by the Russians, which would have extremely unfortunate consequences in Europe and the rest of the world by snowball effect. All this without forgetting the sword of Damocles that hangs over the heads of us all. The threat of a third nuclear world war, which would certainly be the death knell of our modern civilization. The world's leaders are therefore caught between a rock and a hard place and cannot intervene directly in this conflict other than through increasingly harsh economic sanctions on Russia. The problem is that these same sanctions are also costing the rest of the world, and especially European countries, by ricochet effect. No one really knows how long Russia will hold out, but everyone hopes that it will eventually bend under the weight of these sanctions. And if the ultimate wish of some people, horrified by the horrors of war, is that Vladimir Putin be buried six feet under as soon as possible because with his disappearance, his entire system will collapse, for the moment, these are only daydreams. Because as we have seen, the Russian president is even more powerful than he ever was in the past. And unless there is a miracle, the world will remain in chaos and war with the unfortunate result of millions of deaths and refugees.
Now tell us in the comments if you think that the death of Vladimir Putin will occur in the near future. Don't forget to subscribe and click here to watch another of our videos.